The emergence of artificial intelligence is giving us a look at what it can do and just as important what its limitations are. We say good morning to Dr. Jessica Yang from UT Dallas Department of Computer Science. Good morning to you. Good morning, Brandon. I'm glad to be here. So we've seen the new AI technology, specifically chat GPT, and there are others. We've seen that in action and you have taken it for several test drives. What do you think? I have. I think that ChatGPT is unique in its ability to produce human-like or human-seeming text. Um, I think it's great that the public has the opportunity to make use of it. Uh, these models were actually available for about three years before the release of ChatGPT. So this technology is not necessarily brand new, but it's never been packaged up in such a nice, easily accessible way before. So I think it's great that more people are getting to experience it. Yeah, and especially students. And that's where we've seen some of the concerns, writing papers with it, uh, other reports, uh, you know, that, that they could use this for, for education purposes. Uh, so you say it's got uses both in academics and creative writing, but plenty of limitations as well. Yes, that's very true. Um, ChatGPT is known for producing what we call uh, hallucinations. In other words, it makes things up. So you can't always be sure that what it's outputting is actually factually correct. So if you wanted to use it to write a book report, you should probably double check that to make sure that it didn't accidentally switch the villain and the hero, for example. Um, ChatGPT and models like it always put out their most confident generation, and so they are unable to tell if they've made a mistake. So you need a human in the loop to figure that out, to check the work. Right, and I had a chance to experience it firsthand, so I want to read you a bit of a text that I got from one of my sons who asked ChatGPT to write a request in Shakespearean dialect for him to drive my car. And part of it was, Please, Father, grant me this boon and let me take to the roads with thy trusty car at my command. Signed, <laughs> Thy Obedient Son. So it goes on and on, but you get the point. There, there's definitely a fun and creative factor to this. Yeah, I think it's a, a great tool for brainstorming ideas um, to sort of bounce things off of. It can give suggestions for how to phrase things. As you've seen, it's very good at changing the style in which you write. So. Let's say you want to write an email to your boss um, and you realize that at the time you drafted it, you were kind of in a bad mood. You could ask ChatGPT, hey, can you rephrase this to be a little more polite, a little more tactful? Um, it's great for things like editing assistance or um, spelling, grammar checks, um, formality, things like that. Yeah, some of the other cautions are when you start delving into politics, you ask it a political question and you'll see its responses are oftentimes very far left liberal with some conservative issues, even leaving it with no response. So is that something that will change or can change or would that change only if its creators input more balance into the system? Um, I mean, I can't speak specifically for how or uh, exactly what data OpenAI used to train this model, the, the company who put it out. Um, I will say that ChatGPT and all models are trained on data produced in a society. Um, and so bias is sort of inevitable because it learns whatever data it's given. So if you wanted to produce a model that had a particular bias, it would actually be quite easy to do that just by manipulating the types of data it had in, uh, access to during training. So I've not personally experienced this, but um, you can imagine that depending on what it's seen at training time, that's what it's gonna say back. It's sort of like a very, very fancy parrot. Yeah, and, and real quickly, uh, we're almost out of time, but uh, there was a story that I read in the New York Times about uh, chat, or not chat GP, GPT specifically, but AI being used to detect breast cancer and learning more about what can be detected so much so, I guess, that there is some concern or fear that it may put people out of jobs. Yeah, I think there's always a fear that uh, AI capabilities will exceed human performance levels and then you won't need humans to do their jobs anymore. Um, but I would say that any AI system will never achieve 100% performance. And unlike a human who can realize that they've made a mistake, these AI systems can't do that. Um, and so you need to be quite cautious whenever you take the output of an AI model at face value. Um, you don't know that it's necessarily correct, but it will present itself as if it's fully confident in its answer. So I would caution against anyone using the output directly for anything that was very important. You should always be checking to make sure it's not made a mistake.
Great advice. Great advice. There is so much more to learn about ChatGPT, and you can start at UT Dallas. There is a panel discussion coming up Tuesday, March 21st at 7 p.m. It is a free event, but you are asked to register for that. You can find a link on our website, foxfornews.com.